Brian Powell of I Run Far here with Casey Emmon before the 2015 U.S. Mountain Running Championships. How are you? I'm good. You've been running these uh, mountain championships for a while. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, well, I don't know what my first one was. Maybe 2009? Yeah. And pretty much every year since? Yeah. I don't know if I've missed a year. I might have missed one year, I think. But 2011 on, I know you've been... Yes. And 2011... You had a pretty good uh, go at the mountain running. I did. Yeah, everything just came together that day. Uh, it was just my surprise. Yeah, you were, you were world mountain running champion, and uh, uh, it was an up and down year. It was. Yeah. And it was uh, Max King also won that race. Yep, and the race was on 9-11, which was cool. Wow. It was like the anniversary. Mm -hmm. And cool. Max King is the course designer here. Yep. And his suit, his strengths are probably, I would guess, somewhat similar to your strengths. Yeah, so that's probably good. <laughs> yeah, that might be the one thing to my advantage at this <laughs> this weekend. You've had a pretty long trip, eh? Yeah, so I got back from Italy on um, Monday night, mm -hmm. and then took off at. We got up at four a.m. on uh, Thursday, and then traveled until whatever we got here at maybe nine thirty. This time zone. Pacific daylight time. All right. So that's that's quite the haul. So, yeah. And I got the two kids and my husband came along. And, um, yeah. And I'm realizing now I'm like, you know, I was jet lagged. And now I'm like two, three hours further jet lagged. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was up pretty early this morning. Been productive morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you need a little nap this afternoon. Yeah, maybe. Um, so in 2012 and 2014, I think you were third both years at the U.S. Mountain Running Championships on the podium um, again. Yeah, uh, 2012, I was fifth, fifth and, okay. I, and I just missed making the team. You just missed it. Yeah, then, so I've just missed making the team quite a lot. 2009 and 2010 and 2012, I just missed making the team. So does that <laughs> does that become your ultimate goal? Because there's, there's multiple goals. Like you can go to be you've won worlds. Like it would be easy for people to think all you want to do is win, but you'd also want to go to worlds again yeah so how do you balance those two goals no i really at this race i have to think top four and that's what i did last year and if mm -hmm. i was actually top four last year um but uh then i ended up my season which just was going on too long and i ended up not Point of I, I ended up not taking the spot which yeah. so this year i said i don't want to do that again i don't like not taking the spot mm -hmm. um so I want to make the team and I want to take the spot. <laughs> and um, that's, I mean, that's the goal. And it doesn't matter really that much to me at all if I'm first, second, third, or fourth. It's, you want to go to Wales. Yeah. And, and I have to be cognizant that the altitude is definitely, it could be an issue. It's not high altitude, but I'm coming from sea level and I'm racing against a lot of people who are coming down in altitude <laughs> for this race. And um, I've had a couple of experiences in the shorter distance races where I, I, I think I'm good and then all of a sudden... Uh, it's, I can't, you know, get the oxygen anymore. Oh. So I'm, um, you know, I'm trying to figure out, you know, do, how smart do I play it? Cause I don't want to blow up and then end up not holding top four. Yeah. I don't want to go for it really. You know, if we were in New Hampshire, I think I'd be a lot more aggressive with my race plan. Yeah. Did, is that what happened two years ago? Cause the last time I was up and down, you were 15th or something like that. You were yeah. well off your potential, let's say. That was because I uh, had just had my second ah. son six or seven weeks prior to the race. That so would do I, it. I wasn't having any intention of making the team that year. I just wanted to participate. And it was local. It wasn't like it was local. To, exactly. Across the I could country. just drive over. My parents live right near the course, and uh, I'd, I'd been out of competition for the year with you know the birth of my son. So I just wanted to see everybody and take part. So that, that's what happened. That was that just year. a fun year. That's <laughs> why I was so far back that year. I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you're, uh, you're a little bit more, a little sharper for this one? Yeah, I should be. I'm, training's been going really well, but I'm kind of in my base phase of training right now. Mm -hmm. So it's a little tricky with the racing. I think that's kind of what happened with me last weekend is uh, my race didn't go well. You were in the Dolomite felt, Sky Race. Felt yeah. good, yep. I felt strong and good. I just didn't have that sharpness yet. And that makes sense with where I'm at in my training. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm only at that place in my training because I was coming off of injury and just couldn't get started. Any sooner. Gotcha. So last time we <clears throat> talked out at the rut, you were um, thinking of going for sort of switching gears and doing a bunch of marathon training. Is that uh, where yeah. things 
went wrong? Well, I think it was the, the, the whole season of mountain running beat me up really badly. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I kind of got on level surfaces, some inflammation in my ankles um, went away and revealed a, an injury to the ankle that I didn't really realize I had. Yeah. And um, so I had to bail out of the rest of the fall season and it came back again in the when I went to Hong Kong for the 50k in February I just went back to square one with the injury which was not good and then I had to come back again um, so it's been sort of a really nagging chronic long-term injury and now that I finally if I got I got through the Dolomites race yeah. without any pain in that ankle so I'm feeling pretty confident that it's good for any situ- you know any kind of terrain now yeah <laughs> But, um, but yeah, the trainings are going well. I feel good, but I, I just, it's, I'm, it's an unknown kind of how I'll be able to put it together in the race. So I hope, I'm hoping it works out. Now, how's that going to go? Cause previously you did concentrate more on the shorter distance. And like last year you had yeah. a bunch of marathon or ultra distance races. You, you did great. You were second at speed go, you were second at the rut. Right. And then this year you've already run, you won the white face sky race over in New York and you're at Dolomites. Yeah. How do you keep? Have you focused on keeping the speed or where does that fit in your, your priorities right now? Yeah, well this year I, I made, I decided not to do any of the, the ultra category sky races mm-hmm. and nothing longer than the, the marathon like, okay. distance. Um, I, I have a lot of different things I'm trying to train for right now. And really the probably one that's taking priority is marathon training because I really want to get uh, the Olympic trials qualifier and I haven't been able to do yeah. that yet. I'm running out of time. So <clears throat> that's like right now I'm just kind of trying to build a good training base for that. But that's honestly, that's where I came from. That's where I came from in 2011 mm-hmm. and before that. And that's when I'm fit for, you know, when I'm fit, I can do all the different terrains well. Gotcha. Um, and if that fitness isn't there, I don't do any of it well. And I, I don't do as much specific training as um, because I do such a variety of things. So for me, it's like as long as I'm getting in some mileage and, you know, a long run and some speed workouts, they translate mm-hmm. pretty well for me. Um, and I just, you know, I, I need some more months of training to really get to my peak. It would be great if I can pull off making the team. I feel like then I'll be in a good place in September mm-hmm. to race well at Worlds if I can get there. And it'd be um, a good combination in terms of aiming for your marathon goal because you'd have the base now. You could work on some sharpness. And then bring it all together yeah, afterwards. Yeah, it should come together. Yeah, it's a little tricky. And, and with the sky races being shorter, I'm not going to be beating myself up with the seven and eight hour races yeah. like I was last year. Um, the Dolomites is only 22K. It's still a two and a half hour race, but, <laughs> you know. Uh, when you were injured, were you able to do any cross training? I know you, you live in a good spot for some Nordic skiing, were you? Yeah, that. I did in the winter just to keep myself from going stir crazy. I did do um, some some Nordic skiing and some swimming and um, and that kind of thing. I didn't go overboard with the cross training because I also was the two kids had definitely left me feeling pretty drained in a lot of ways. So mm-hmm. I was I knew I needed to just replenish. So I, I I didn't do a lot. So I definitely lost some fitness over the winter. Yeah. On the Nordic <laughs> speaking of Nordic skiing. There's a bunch of competitors in the women race who come very strongly from that background and and still mix mix it in. Yeah. Uh, I think in the ultra scene, we've seen a lot of people come like doing the schemo thing in the winter, especially in Europe. Um, do you think Nordic skiing also is a really good base for definitely for trail running? I think I think Nordic skiers translate really well to mountain running. I I, I always recommend like to the junior team like look for some Nordic skiers because they'll be really strong. Um, you know, especially on the cl- uphill in the years, I feel like that's a huge advantage, but <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, all the, you know, it's a fun sport mountain running because you get people from all different disciplines. Yes, we have a, we have a visitor. <laughs> Did you fall and land on a cactus? <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. So uh, on the course this weekend, there's a, it's two laps for you. Yes. And probably 850 feet of climb. Uh, pretty sandy terrain. That's what I hear. And then the, the, the descent isn't what you've been running in the Dolomites. I have it's, not seen it yet. It's a it's road <laughs> descent, a uh, dirt road descent. Okay. It's pretty well groomed, but uh, there can be some sliding, and there's, of course, little rocks embedded in it. Yeah. Uh, when you're opening up on stuff, like, do you take a really different approach if it's really technical versus on a on a dirt road descent? Yeah. Um... 
we'll have to see. I mean, each course is different for sure. And um, I, I, um, I open up pretty well on most descents. The Dolomites are the, the line for me where that, that, where it's, if you have loose, um, like rocks rolling out from under you, yeah. you just can't see where the, where to land. Um, I, I do have a little more trouble, trouble with that things, single track and, um, I feel like I can go pretty fast and a little, I think what I'll see on this course, I'll feel pretty confident yeah. on. Um, and I think I will be able to open it up. Um, hopefully it's technical enough that yeah. I can, you know, I don't want it too fast. So it's not, you know, feeling traily. Cause there's also, uh, Somewhere some women in the, in the race who, you know, there's, there's you and Megan Kimmel and Brandy, but there's also there. people who have <laughs> insanely quick. <laughs> You're gonna be able to edit this video? No, we love having kids on Iron Far. We actually can't really see. Who do we have in here? No, I think she fell and got cut. Do you, can you go inside and ask Eli to turn on the sink or the bathtub? No, you. Okay. All right, well. <laughs> good luck with your I'm race on need. Saturday and good I'm luck uh, now. <laughs> Thank you, Casey. Interview over. <laughs> <laughs> oh.